Hi everyone, it's Erin from EV Mixed Media. It has been ages since I've made a video. Actually, it hasn't been ages since I've made a video. I've made a lot of videos. I just have not posted them because I have not been happy with uh, how the pages turned out. I was working in my flip journal on a lot of those and I just, I don't know, I feel like I've lost my mojo or something. Um, so I just haven't been that interested in working with paint in my journals for a couple months now. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see I'm doing a lot of collage and smaller collages. And that seems to be something I'm capable of doing and enjoy doing and I'm drawn to doing. So a lot of collage making, um, but I was sort of thinking about, um, do I want to move away from just doing some collages and journals? And I got to thinking, I was watching, I was seeing a lot of people post ATCs or artist trading cards. And if you're not familiar with ATCs, they are kind of like baseball cards. The standard size is two and a half by three and a half. They don't have to have rounded edges. Um, but basically artists create little works of art on their artist trading cards and on the back they put a label um, and then they share them with other artists. So I created these. This was a master sheet I had had of collage papers um, and I just kind of felt like oh I'll do some little collaging on these and turn them into ATCs and then that got me thinking about oh other ways I could make some ATCs. So I thought I would do that. And that seems pretty simple for me to do about my speed right now. And hopefully I won't screw it up. And this video will actually see the light of day. So I'm going to start. I have a piece of mixed media paper. This is eight by six. And so I think I should be able to get like five trading cards out of this. Um, one page, that's my goal. So um, I'm gonna create a master sheet using this. I've got three colors of paint here. These are all ana analogous colors, that is colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. Uh, these are apple barrel paints, very inexpensive. You can get them at uh, crafts. So I, I don't know if this is a Walmart brand. I think you can get them at other craft stores, but they're very inexpensive. These are like 52 cents a bottle. Um, peachy pink, this is jack-o'-lantern and this is king's gold. So it's basically a, a peachy pink, an orange, and a yellow. Uh, I've also got some writing implements here. I have a thing of gesso. Um, I've got my Posca pens in black and white and gold. Um, and then I have also some Posca pens in those three colors of kind of peachy pink and orange and yellow. And I have some Neocolor 2 crayons that I'm gonna play with. Um, so this is a great exercise, especially if you just don't know how to break the page or, or what to do. So I'm gonna start with just a pencil and just because it's hard to break the page, I'm gonna break the page. So there you go, I've done it. Done, now I don't have to worry about making a mistake, right? Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of gesso on my palette and I'm gonna choose one of these colors. My gesso's not coming out. So I'll start with the peachy pink. And for some reason, you know, this is probably the third bottle I bought of this peachy pink, and this is super, super runny. So I don't know, it's like a different batch or they've changed the recipe or I don't know. It's really runny, not happy with that. All right, now, um, let's get started. And just a note, the lighting is a little dull in here today, and that is because it is April 4th, and we are in the middle of a nor'easter in Maine. So we have no power, and we have probably eight inches of snow outside, maybe. Um, this is the second time we've lost power in a week or 10 days. Uh, so I'm up in my art room. I have a lot of windows in here, so I think I'll have light for a little bit longer, but it might not be as bright as it normally is. Okay. So I've got my pink paint and I am going to just load up a wide flat brush and I'm gonna make some shapes. I'm gonna do circles for now. Well, maybe we'll change them up. And I don't have enough paint. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white and then I'll get it, that'll give me a different variation on the color. I'm just stick with circles for now, I guess. Okay. 
Okay. Now while that's still wet, let's take another color. Let's do the yellow. King's gold. There you go. That's a much thicker consistency coming out of that one. And I'm just going to keep going with this. And you don't have to use these colors, but by choosing analogous colors on the color wheel, again, that's colors that are adjacent to each other, you're gonna get a harmonious piece a lot more easily uh, without having to get into a lot of color theory. <laughs> um, so you'll be assured of everything sort of going together. Okay. Now this is one of those where it's gonna look like an absolute hot mess while you're doing it. But as you keep going, um, it will get better and better and better. Let's try this now. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I can't. So we're just going to have to wait or work with it wet. I don't have any power. Okay. Well, let's get off some of the excess so it'll dry a little faster. It's still a little damp, so we'll just work around that. So I have a really nice, massive Posca pen, Posca paint pen, um, that's a really wide angle wedge uh, tip. And I love just making some lines, really bold lines in black. So you can see that paint is still a little wet, but that's okay. Let's just leave it at that. I think those are nice bold lines. I think that looks cool. We could also do just some dots for contrast. Um, I've got my Neo colors here. Let's pull out some of those. Whoops. I don't know what that is. But you just make some marks with your Neo colors. If you have crayons, you could use those. You could use colored pencils, uh, Sharpies, markers, whatever you have. It doesn't have to be Neo colors. If you do have Neo colors, you can then, um, with a wet brush, sort of activate the color a little bit if you want to, which could be nice, but not necessary. Okay, let's get some of this orange in here. How do we want to put this on? Why don't we? This is a Nerf dart, uh, a, one I just recently found. <laughs> and I love it for adding uh, dots to my art. You might be able to hear some humming in the background and that is a generator. We do have it, we just got a generator this year. It's only the second time we've had it running. Right now, we only have it running for the furnace and the well pump, um, septic pump, and the refrigerators. So that's why I'm sitting up here with no power. It's not a whole house generator. This is life in Maine. Um, no, I feel like I want a little more white. 
So what's fun about this is you just sort of go with the flow and um, let your instincts sort of guide you and anything goes and just have fun and trust the process that it's gonna look great when it's finished. This is just a pill bottle dipped in some gesso. Okay. And normally I would say keep drying this as you're going, but I don't have access to that, so I can't do it. So I'm just gonna try and be careful and not smudge a lot of this. Let's see, what else do I want? Um, I'd like to circle these orange circles <laughs> in black, but I'm kind of, they're so wet, I gotta be careful. Splatters. Do I want them in black or white? If you like, maybe some black. Or, oh, let's try this. I've got some burnt sienna here. I thought I had Nicolazo gold, but we'll go with burnt sienna right now. Let's do that. That'll match what we're doing here. Um, I like to do splatters with a fan brush. I just kind of dip it in water. You don't really need a lot of water when you're using. Oh yeah, that looks nice. When you're using the high flow golden, you don't need a lot of water. Okay. And I don't know, we just maybe a few more touches on this. And of course I gotta have some gold on here. So I'm just gonna do some tiny scribble writing, just a little bit smaller because our final product is only gonna be this big. So our writing doesn't have to be huge to make an impact. That's it. So I've now cut my cards into two and a half by three and a half um, inch rectangles. And now's our chance to sort of examine each one and see what's missing. So this one looks a little sad and lonely, not a lot going on. So it didn't get any, somehow, it didn't get any of these orange dots. So let's put a few more on that one. And I'm, I guess it did get some of those. Let's circle those in gold. I think that will make them pop maybe a little more. Maybe I should have done it in black. There's no black striping on this. I could add that. I'll wait until the orange dries. This one looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of everything on it. So does this one. It could maybe use some more pink though. Just put a corner of pink on there and then maybe we could put some scribbly writing in there. Um, this one looks okay, I think. This one could use some more of the black just that one piece coming in there. So we'll just add a little bit more there and then maybe one of these here and maybe some more of these.
I think that'll do it. Okay, so I've got my cards here and I am just gonna finish them off. I've rounded the corners on all of them, but this one I'm using, this is called a, Ko a Kadumaru Pro Corner Rounder. It has three sizes, small, medium, and large. And for trading cards, I usually do the medium. And I just think rounding the corners gives it such a nice finished look. It's not necessary, but I do like it. Um, and then I find when I make a series like this, I really like to um, embellish them in the same uh, way so that they all look like they are from a series that I've done together and they look of a piece. So I find it helpful to use uh, embellishments um, use the same embellishments on each one. So I make sure I have enough um, paper. So I've chosen some of this really nice, um, it's sort of a tissue paper with um, script on it. I've also got a book page here I might use. Um, I've got some great thread in sort of a coral color, a peach color and a yellow uh, that'll be nice to add some texture. And then I also have some tea bags, which I thought were really, um, uh, cool because they kind of really pick up these colors and I've got these cute little hearts in gold uh, which I cut out from this gold paper for some bling and I have some sentiments that I've also cut out uh, so I am gonna just start assembling these <music> These are all done and to finish them off I like to add a little sticker on the back for when I'm doing a trade and I put the date on which today is the 4th of April um, of 2004 or 2024 geez and I made five of these so this would be one of five and I will just uh, peel this off and stick it on the back and it's ready to send to a friend. Yeah, I thought these turned out super cute. They were pretty quick and easy to make. I love the gold. I think the colors look great together. I'm starting to lose the light, so I think I'm gonna have to uh, say goodbye. But I hope you found these kind of fun, and hopefully I'll be able to produce some more videos uh, to share with you in the coming weeks. Uh, in the meantime, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at EB Mixed Media. That's EB underscore Mixed Media. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.